Watch the Mysteries of Existence channel for divine enlightenment. To know more about yourself, the physical and subtle aspects of the universe, and the source of all that is. This is a message brought to you by the Harbinger of the Last Covenant, His Grace, Ike Nathan Yazorma, author, Archbishop, University Chancellor, Scholar in Extraterrestrial Research, Professor of Christian Education at St. Thomas Abekic University, England, recipient of Nelson Mandela Excellent Leadership Award in Africa, former living Grand Master in the Order of Terrestrial and Astral Hierarchy, amongst others. Dear listeners, this episode 56 is a material for spiritual guidance. It is a message from the Harbinger of the Last Covenant, His Grace, Ike Nathan Yazorma, titled, The Path of Divine Ascent, Part 15. I read this great divine admonition as follows. Children of men, grace be multiplied in peace from the glorious throne of the Almighty God of creation, even His Spirit that abides within you, and within which you abide. Amen. The path of light is the path of true love. Our human problems are associated with a lack of true love. True love is the panacea to war, terrorism, injustice, battles in the family arena, robbery, corruption, and all that holds us down in the morass of the prison yard of materialism. True love encapsulates the existence of sanity in divine light. It is the only true religion recognized on earth by the eternal spirit of the almighty God of creation. Mercy, forgiveness, peace, joy, divine wealth, patience, and all the godly virtues are embedded within true love. True love holds the basis for a rise in the scale of existence. It is both the father and mother of the path of light. For ages, selfless services of love in thoughts, words, and actions to all constitute the message from above via the masterminds to the children of men. Outside the framework of divine love, the mode of darkness reigns amongst humans. In the mode of darkness, man becomes the number one enemy of himself. It is on the platform of the mode of darkness that the vicious astral entities use man against man. Outside the framework of organized religions, the masterminds proclaimed love as the only path towards having access to the higher regions of the spirit of the Almighty God of creation. Therefore, if you possess love and belong to our organized religions, you will ascend in light. Also, if you possess love and do not belong to organized religion, you will ascend in light. There is no religion or organization that is beyond the practical application of selfless divine love in action. Love in action is God in motion. It is said that God is love. This is the final truth. Consequently, anything that diminishes love within you has placed you in the downward trend of the scale of existence. The ultimate application of love was enacted in the world of man by the great Lord Jesus the Christ. The great Lord Jesus the Christ is the master of masters, the master of the masterminds. Thus, he demonstrated love as the only way to the higher heavenly realms of light. And when it is said that Christ is the only way to God, that way to God is love in all ramifications. Earthman, in any heart that love is present, in any place or environment that love is found, the light of heaven will come forth and dominate. Then light will add to light, and the dominion of light will prevail. The forces of darkness dread the dominion of light. The forces of darkness will stay away from you if the dominant of true love, which is the light of the Almighty God of creation, is evident in your consciousness. In any heart that hate is dominant, in any place that hate is established, therein will the forces of darkness triumph. Then darkness will add to darkness, and wickedness will have a free passage. Therefore, choose the path of light, not the path of darkness, for your upward excellence in the journey of life. 
The modus operandi of the path of light is perfected in the world of man by the great Lord Jesus the Christ. The life of the great Lord Jesus the Christ, including his works and teachings, are the perfect example for humans, as far as the path of light, the journey of divine ascent in the scale of existence, is concerned. The great Lord Jesus the Christ didn't establish any organized religion in the world of man. The Lord himself even worshipped in the already built temple of Judaism in Jerusalem. This means that he did not physically build or worship in any temple, church, or synagogue that he directly established or built on earth. He also divinely informed the children of men that the hour will come when the earth men will worship the Almighty God of creation in spirit and in truth, within their elevated spiritual consciousness, and not in the religious organizational terms of the temples or churches built by humans. That hour is now. Consequently, the great Lord Jesus the Christ directed humans to shine the light of goodness anywhere they are. This light of goodness is embedded with love. It is the path of light, made for elevation in the scale of existence. Good attracts good. Therefore, always be good to all humans at all times. Hate attracts wickedness towards the downward journey in the scale of existence. In the Bible book of Luke, chapter 10 verses 25 to 37, a certain Jewish religious man and lawyer approached the great Lord Jesus the Christ with a question on the principles of true life. The Lord tactically directed him to speak on what he knows in this regard. The man responded according to the scriptures and spoke about love to God and to one's neighbor. The Lord told him thus, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. The Lord didn't direct him to any temple, synagogue, church, mosque, or ashram in order to be elevated to the path of his eternal light. Rather, he told him to go and practice love because the practice of love is the only true religion recognized in the heavenly realms of light and divinely approved in the world of man. At the same time, that earthman, in the mood for justification to himself, further asked the Lord, and who is my neighbor? In his divine response, which is a guide to the children of men desiring to walk on the path of light, the great Lord Jesus the Christ said thus. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. At this point, the Lord asked the man to speak on the three persons, specifically concerning the true neighbor of the wounded man. The man answered that the true neighbor was the good Samaritan who had compassion and practically demonstrated love. Finally, the Lord told him, Go, and do thou likewise. What the great Lord Jesus the Christ said in this connection is the true spirit of the path of divine ascent in the journey of life. You have been told that the great Lord Jesus the Christ didn't establish any organized religion in the human terms. Rather, he established true love as the path of light for all generations of the children of men. Therefore, to be strengthened on the path of light equally entails to work strictly within the framework of love. Thus, the practice of selfless divine love is the bona fide essence of the path of light. You have peace only when the practical application of love is activated within you.
It is not possible to walk on the path of light without the quality of inner peace. Whenever inner peace eludes your consciousness, you are placed outside the platform of the path of light. Inner peace is the embellishment of consciousness. Whatever robs you of peace of heart has also made you a dwarf in the scale of existence. Joy comes into your experience when peace is present within you. To this end, mercy and forgiveness will easily become evident in your daily life. Without these qualities, no one will rise in the scale of the Almighty God of creation. In the ancient Shariat of Tibet, one of the leading sacred writings of the masterminds, souls within the human embodiment are admonished never to subjugate the path of light. Whosoever that is situated on this path is also admonished never to take it for granted, because only you can prove the primary evidence of this path for yourself. This evidence is encapsulated in true love, embedded with simple living and right thinking. The proclivities of right thinking are determined by the divine spheres of reality, not within the limitations of the human intellectual fabrics of being. What about simple living? This is the summary of the true art of humility in genuine compassion to fellow humans. The Shariat spoke about touching the robe of God. This is a metaphor for rising in the divine scale of the Almighty God of creation. It is the duty of everyone to do this. No one should remain behind and become a dwarf in this connection. Everyone should rise and touch the robe of God, in the eternal consciousness of the Spirit of Light. In one of the ancient sacred writings of the wise men of the East, the Earthman is admonished thus, as the breath of heaven saith unto the water of the deep, This way shall thy billows roll, and no other, thus high and no higher, shall they raise their fury, so let sound mind, O man, actuate and direct thy flesh, so let it repress thy wildness. Now, a sound mind is the mind that is renewed by the spirit of light. It is the mind embedded with simple living and right thinking. Your sound mind is your best friend. The opposite of a sound mind is your worst enemy. Blessed is the one whose mind is renewed by the light of the Almighty God of creation. That will be all for now. A word is enough for the wise. Peace and blessings.